I'm gonna survive the next 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore. Starting on this cool village island, I'm gonna try and achieve my three goals. Getting full diamond gear, getting an elytra, and most importantly, transforming this island village into an awesome Minecraft survival base. But without further ado, here we are on day one. And I'm sure we all know how this goes. Punch, mine, craft, and oh wow, would you look at that, we got some stone tools. Yep, that's right, I'm a genius. But after that bit of extreme Minecraft skill, I said hello to this moron villager and took a little look around see if I could find anything of use. I did find a stone cutter, which is pretty nice, I suppose. And also this sweet blue bed. But after knocking on a few more doors, I did manage to find something super useful. Nope, not this villager child. Some bread and potatoes. I was kind of hoping this village had some good food fields, but all it had was pumpkins. After that, I found myself in a cave just below the village. So I thought I'd hop down and hopefully grab a little bit of iron. And it's at this point, I should perhaps have asked myself, should I go into this cave with no armor and only stone tools? I mean, it's not like mobs were gonna spawn down there, is it? Well, Guess what? I'm a massive moron and ended up fighting four zombies. But you know what's worse than four zombies? One skeleton. And this one skeleton almost ended the video on day one. Oh my god, just run. Just run. Get out. But anyway, I finally remembered that I'm great at Minecraft and killed a skeleton, lit up the cave a bit, and got the heck out of there. Oh yeah, and this creeper almost killed me too. Ugh. But after all that, I only managed to get two iron. So I sacrificed this iron golem and planted my potatoes I found earlier. And that takes us into day two, where I decided I wanted to chop down all the trees on this island. So I chopped and chopped until I could chop no more. And you may ask yourself, how much wood would a block down chop if a block down could chop wood? Yep, that was cringe. Well, I'll tell you the answer. It was nowhere near enough. Because, well, this island is massive and I only have stone tools. But don't worry, I'll make some good use out of these logs that we just got. After chopping, I went down into the cave that we explored yesterday and mined up a load of coal so that I could craft up a bunch of torches. I wanted to try and light up the island so we could prevent some mob spawning and, well, keep all of our villagers alive. But once again, I underestimated the size of this island and that was the end of day two. On day three, I wanted to start taking it advantage of our new friends and start trading. So I looked around the village to find a fletching table and brought it back to this guy over here and turned him into a fletcher. I then turned all the logs we got yesterday into sticks and started trading, getting lots of emeralds and XP. My plan was to turn these emeralds into some good gear by trading with a weaponsmith and a toolsmith. So I crafted up a smithing table to try and give one of these unemployed villagers a job. But unfortunately, these morons are feeling a little bit too lazy to do anything useful today. But after a little bit of soul searching, I found something of interest, a shipwreck. So I hopped in a boat and made the short journey across to see if I could find anything of use. And you know what? It wasn't bad at all. At this point though, it's getting pretty late in the day and I was getting worried about my villagers getting eaten. So I made a trip back to the village to get a good night's sleep. On day four, I wanted to set out on a quick adventure to try and locate the buried treasure. Thankfully, it wasn't too far away and double thankfully, it didn't take me long to dig out. And look at all this loot. So of course, I grabbed all that and started heading back to the village island. And that's when something else caught my attention. It turned out to be one of those ocean ruins that spawn those horrible trident guys. So, well, I got scared and left for safety. I parked the boat at the island dock and decided to spread out this sugar cane. Surely I was going to need a lot of this at some point in the future. But anyway, I thought I'd make a grindstone to see if I could convince any of these lazy villagers to get a job and actually help me out. And lo and behold, I did actually manage to get these villagers a couple of jobs. And by the end of day four, we were well on our way to getting some good gear. Just a fair amount of trading to do, but that's all right. Day five was a bit of a weird one. Basically, I bought way too many iron axes and then chopped some spruce trees so I can trade sticks for emeralds. I really had to unlock the good trades from these villagers. And the only way to do it was to buy stuff that I didn't really want. But a huge problem that I was having was to sleep every night to keep these villagers safe. Doing this was wasting a lot of time, and if I wanted to achieve my three main goals for this 100 days, I was going to need to be a little bit smarter about what I was doing. Yep, easier said than done for me, I know. I then spent the rest of day five chopping giant spruce trees while thinking what to do with our villager hostages. I mean friends. So on day six, I thought it'd be best to give these villagers their very own fancy home. And when I say fancy home, what I actually mean is a dirty hole in the floor with no fresh air or sunlight. I guess some people might call it a prison or maybe a hell hole or something. But to keep these guys happy, I think they're gonna call it the villager paradise. <sighs> I crafted up some boats that I could capture villagers, which would make them a little bit easier to transport. I then spent the rest of the day six just rowing around the village with some villager passengers. On day seven, I caught the rest of the villagers that I could see close by and brought them to the villager paradise. Then I started digging out their little prison cells, <coughs> I mean holiday homes, so that I could trade with them and hopefully level them up to unlock all the good diamond gear. But once I got a couple of villagers in their cells, I decided it would be a good idea to try and get another Fletcher. That way we can trade more sticks and get more emeralds. But to do that, I was going to need to craft a fletching table, which required a couple of flint. So I hopped into the cave and dug up a bit of gravel till I got the flint that I needed. I crafted the fletching table and gave the villager his brand new job, which for some reason he didn't want. Classic. Oh, just my luck that I get another lazy villager. So I traded a bit with the good boy Fletcher and started 
digging out some more prison cells for our toolsmith and weaponsmith. I spent a bit more time making their luxury homes as nice as possible, and also leveled them up a little bit more. At this point, I knew there was more villagers somewhere in the village, and I think that they needed saving. And that's when I found these idiots. So I dug them a little hole to fall into and covered it up so no bad guys could eat them. But at the end of day seven, I went back to the village of paradise and did a little bit more stick trading. I also thought I'd chop a little bit more wood in the night, got scared by all the mobs, and went to bed, which takes us to day eight, where I started off chopping a bunch more wood for some more stick trades. And while chopping wood, I remembered that there's also an armor of villager in the game. So I crafted up a blast furnace, traded a ton more sticks, and set up a brand new armor of villager. And yet again, another lazy villager. So I ignored that guy and tried to see if a different villager was more willing to work. And yes, we have an armorer. So I bought myself some iron pants and boots, and then bought a bunch more boots I'll never use to try and level this guy up. But after that, this moron want me to sell him iron, which I didn't really have any of at all. So against my better judgment, I sorted out my inventory and grabbed a bit of gear to take a trip away from the island and try and find myself a bit of easy iron. This trip didn't really go that well as I ran into mobs that I really wasn't equipped or skilled enough to take on. I'll say now, if you're new and looking for some high level survival Minecraft skills, then you're probably in the wrong place. But if you're looking for some close shaves and a good laugh, then welcome. And you know what? If you're new and enjoying this video so far, then consider subscribing because only 1.5% of you that watch my videos are actually subscribed. Go on, subscribe! But anyway, with all the cringe gameplay and subscribe reminders done, I head back home with my tail between my legs and seven raw iron. I fought a skeleton that was guarding the dock and took a nap to try and forget that massive failure of an iron adventure. On day nine, I wanted to try and sort out a bit of a better food situation. So I planted the potatoes that I had left now that it wasn't a farmer villager around to steal them. And thankfully, after last night's failure, I had some bones that I could turn into bone meal. That way, I could fill up the fields with potatoes. But now that I've taken care of that, I cooked up what food I had and went to the village of paradise and started digging down in the hopes of finding some iron, because I really needed more to trade with the villagers. Yes, I know I could easily build an iron farm, but at this point I really hadn't thought of that. Don't worry, I'll figure it out eventually. After a while, I made it down to level 16 and started mining in a straight line, picking up a decent amount of iron along the way. Everything was going great until... Oh, this is a big old cave. Should I go down there? Uh, yeah, I'll probably die down there, see ya. So, like the big baby I am, I head back home to sort out my inventory and smelt up some iron. And while I was smelting, I thought I'd take advantage of the night time and do a little bit of mob hunting, because I was hoping to grab a little bit of string. I'm sure some of you regular viewers will know what I want that for. Eventually, I found the spiders I was looking for, killed them, grabbed their string, and head back home to collect my iron. And thankfully, I had enough to finally get myself a full set of iron armor. On day 10, I used my string to craft a fishing rod. Wow, what a surprise. I then spent the daytime just fishing, thinking that I was going to get something amazing like an infinity bow, a name tag, or maybe even a mending book. Well, yep, I was wrong. I just got fish. Oh, who would have thought? I then spent that evening chopping down giant spruce trees once again so that I had more sticks to trade for emeralds. I traded those sticks at the village of paradise and then hopped down the iron strip mine, finding my first gold and also my first lapis. And don't worry everyone, while mining, I finally realized I should probably just make an iron farm. You can all stop pulling your hair out and calling me a stupid moron in the comments now. So on day 11, I set out to get the materials that I needed to build the iron farm. Ironically, the main thing that I needed that I didn't have was, you guessed it, iron. So I set out on another stupid iron adventure collecting any surface iron that I could see. And I'll save you some time. It wasn't overly successful. And by the end of day 11, I was heading back home. On day 12, I made it back to the island and thought it might be best just to keep digging down in the iron strip mine to try and find a cave. And this was a way more efficient way of getting iron. Why did I not do this earlier? And after I had more than enough iron than I needed, the last thing that I had to collect was a bucket of lava. So I spent the rest of day 12 digging down to lava level and mining in a straight line until I got the lava that I needed. And then on day 13 and 14, I built up the iron farm. I won't go into too much detail about how I built it or how it works, but what I will do is leave a link to the tutorial that I used in the description. This was such an easy iron farm to build, and I definitely recommend you give it a go if you're starting in a new world. On day 15, it turns out the iron farm wasn't exactly efficient. And as it happens, I had to stop the iron golems from spawning around the actual farm itself. So I blocked the spawns by making a path around the farm, seven blocks in each direction. But after I got the actual iron farm working properly, I managed to use the remaining iron that I had to max out our armor of villager and buy myself a full set of enchanted diamond armor and a diamond shovel from our toolsmith. Oh, we're getting there, baby. On day 16, I continued to level up our toolsmith and armorer trying to unlock their diamond trades. We were getting really close to achieving our first goal of getting full diamond gear. It was just a matter of trading with them and waiting for their items to restock. I managed to get myself a diamond axe from our weaponsmith and began dropping a whole bunch of trees to clear some more space and get some more sticks for trading. On day 17, for some 
some reason, the stupid, idiot, moron villagers were not refreshing their trades. I had no idea why, but I figured I just need to let some time pass and chop some more trees. At this point, I didn't mind too much because I had a good idea for why I wanted to build on this island, and it was going to require a lot of space. But after chopping trees, I grabbed some iron from the iron farm, and then spent the rest of the day just messing around in the villager paradise. For the most part, day 18 was spent getting frustrated at villagers not wanting to trade, looking for help on the internet, forgetting to pause the game, and chopping trees. I don't want to talk about day 18. But day 19 was a good day. I fixed the villagers and finally managed to trade my way to full diamond gear. Now we can really start making some progress. I took my new diamond tools and started to tear down some villager houses that were going to be in our way for what I wanted to build. I mean, it's not like they were going to need them anymore, is it? But once that was done, I grabbed some coal so I could make some torches and light up this big area. And that was the end of day 19. Which brings us to day 20, where I spent the entire day flattening out this big area and then using that dirt to map out our first big build on this island. Oh, this thing is going to be so awesome. But with the base plan out of the way, I wanted to go on an adventure to try and find some different wood types for our build. Why didn't I do this on the other times I explored? Well, because I'm an idiot. It didn't take me too long sailing in a boat to find some birch and some oak, so I mined up a bit of that and waited around to collect some saplings. I thought this thing as I've traveled quite some distance already, I would keep going to hopefully find some other wood types. Now, I didn't find any of the wood, but I did find a new village, and I was hoping that I could grab some new crops from there. But unfortunately, they had nothing really of any use to me. Ugh. On day 22, I decided I'd keep exploring to find some new crops or wood. I did find this ruined portal, and now that we had a diamond pick, that meant that I could mine up the obsidian to make a portal of our own. I soon left that area though, and not long later, I found a village with exactly what I was looking for. Oh, all the different crops that I needed. I celebrated by killing some cows, and thought it might be best to start looping around so that I was heading in the direction of our island. And after a little bit of walking, I came across another village, and this one was right next to a cherry biome. The villagers looked to be in a little bit of trouble, so I saved their lives by taking a nap. On day 23, I awoke to a burning zombie and then made the villagers' morning worse by liberating them of their only source of food. I took a little look around to see if there's any more crop fields for me to pillage, but all they had was a whole bunch of buildings. So with that, I made my way up to the cherry biome and grabbed a whole bunch of the different cherry stuff. But once my inventory was full, I made the journey back to our island. Once I got back, I planted the saplings that we got from our adventure so that I could start farming all of our new wood. I then spent the rest of day 23 making a giant crop field so I could plant all those stupid villagers crops that I stole. <laughs> I spent day 24 and 25 digging out the center of our base, so that it went down another five blocks. At this point, I wasn't really too sure what I wanted to do with the space, but I thought it'd look a bit more interesting if it had a bit of depth. One thing I did know, though, was that I wanted to load this base with all sorts of farms and other useful things. But once that was all dug out, I spent the rest of day 25 chopping some more giant spruce trees and farming our new wood and crops. On day 26, I wanted to start to figure out what we we're going to do with the outside segments of our base. I thought it would look cool if you had different crops in each of the segments, taking a bit of inspiration from an old starter base of mine. So I started lining the first segment with the spruce logs I chopped yesterday, and thought it would look better if they were stripped. I placed a bunch of spruce slabs on top of the logs to prevent mob spawning, plus it looked pretty nice too. I finished off the outside of the trim with some more stripped spruce logs, and then began turning this segment into farmland. I grabbed all the potatoes that I could find to hopefully fill up the farm, but obviously I had nowhere near enough. Yeah, but that was okay, I could always expand the farm as we go. I then spent the rest of the day 26 and all of day 27, repeating what I just did on the other three segments of the base. Basically, a whole bunch of wood placing, wood stripping, water buckets, hoeing, that sounds weird, and of course, seed planting. But with all that done, it took us to the end of day 27. The next thing I wanted to work on was the floor of the base, and this thing actually took quite a long time. Two whole days, in fact. I wasn't really too sure how I wanted this thing to look, so I was just kind of going with the flow. I thought I'd carry on with the theme of digging out the floor for some more depth, and I also ended up using the different wood types that we found on our adventure. Maybe this wasn't the best design, but maybe I'll mix it up later, I don't know. But anyway, once the floor was complete, I spent the rest of day 29 making some sort of semi-organized storage. Don't worry, we're going to make a proper storage system soon. On the morning of day 30, I was in the mood to start working on some automatic farms, but I had barely any redstone, which meant it was time to strip mine. Now, I know strip mining isn't exactly thrilling content for a video, eh, but hey, I had a nice time doing it, all right? And now that we had a whole bunch of silk-touched ores, on day 32, I 
I wanted to get myself a fortune pickaxe. So I made myself a lectern, found the last free villager that I had on the island, and gave him his very own holiday home. It didn't take me long to roll his trades to get a fortune book, and once I did, I of course bought it, locked him in his home, and went to the village of paradise to buy myself a fresh pickaxe. I took all the enchantments off it, and then put on our fortune 3 book in the anvil. I spent the rest of day 32 fortuning all our ores in the hopes of getting enough redstone for what I wanted to do tomorrow, and thankfully it did give me enough. Now like I said before, I wanted to fill my base with some automatic redstone farms. And the first one I wanted to make was a sugarcane farm. I figured it would come in pretty useful. So I picked a spot under the base and started digging out an area that the farm could fit into. It was times like this that I was so thankful for diamond gear. But once I thought I had enough space, I went back up to craft some redstone materials. And that's when I realized making a sugarcane farm would be a lot easier if I had observers. And you can't make observers without quartz. And well, you can't get quartz without going to the nether. So I made myself a temporary nether portal next to the cherry trees and I hop right in. Bruh. I think this might be the worst nether spawn I've ever had. Or was it? A nether fortress. Now, I was only here for quartz at the moment and I wasn't really wanting to go into a nether fortress right now, but I thought it'd be best to dig towards it while mining for the quartz. Which brings us to day 34, where I continue to dig towards the fortress until I saw some skellies that could maybe shoot me off and end this video right now. So obviously I got scared and went digging for quartz in a different direction. It didn't take me long to grab what I needed and I had back home through the portal. I fortune my quartz, made some observers, and started to build up the base of the farm. Now, I'm not too sure if this is the most efficient way to make a farm, and I bet there are loads of great tutorials out there, but sometimes it's just more fun trying to give it a go yourself. I wanted the observer to trigger the piston when the sugarcane grows, which would of course break the sugarcane. I was then going to use hopper minecarts running underneath to pick up the items and drop them off in a chest. But before I could get to putting down the item collection system, it was the end of day 34. The next morning, I crossed crafted up the rails that I would need, and laid the tracks for the item collection system. I also made a minecart unloader at the end of the track, so that way the sugarcane actually had somewhere to go. But once that was installed, I started decorating the farm. I thought that some glowstone would look pretty good for some hidden lighting, so I hopped back into the nether to grab some. And by the time I got back, it was night time, and that was the end of day 35. I spent the morning of day 36 placing in the glowstone we got yesterday, and finishing off the roof of the farm. Once that was finished though, I wanted to head out away from the island to find some sand. That way I could turn it into glass, and use it as windows for the sugarcane, and hopefully that would make the farm 100% lossless. I spent some time chopping trees and working on the farm floor while I was waiting for the glass to smell. Oh jeez! Oh. Yeah, maybe I should probably close the door while I'm AFK. But anyway, by the time the glass was smelted, it was the end of day 36. On the morning of day 37, I placed in all the glass for the farm, and for now, I was going to call it complete, which was leading me on to my next project for the base. Finally, a storage room. But before I got into that, I wanted to do something that I should have done a long time ago, and that was to go bring some cows to our island. I was thinking that I wanted to maybe use some item frames in a storage room, which of course requires some leather. And let me tell you, I don't know if I have a cursed seed, or if I was being punished for killing cows earlier, but I could not find cows anywhere. I saw sheep, chickens, pigs, but no cows. Well, that was until, of course, I did actually find them, catch them in some boats, and transport them back to the island one by one. I made them a temporary little home, that way I could breed them and unalive them later. I spent the rest of day 37 playing around with my crops, seeing as we were going to need some wheat to actually breed our cows. On day 38, it was time to start the storage room project. And just like the sugarcane farm, I wanted to make this under the base. But this time it was going to be in the middle, acting as the central hub. I spent the entire day digging out a big area, gathering up a whole bunch of materials for future projects. Projects. Once the space was dug out, I spent the entire night chopping down giant spruce trees, as we were going to need a ton of wood for all the storage room chests and decoration. Day 39 was spent planning out and building the storage room. My plan was to try and build a sort of warehouse style system, where items are grouped together in rows. I've done this sort of thing before in other worlds, and I love it so much it's sort of become my go-to way of making storage. On day 40, I finally broke my first diamond pick while digging out more space for the storage room. But luckily for me, replacing it is as easy as trading with a villager in the village of paradise. Oh, I'm so glad I took the time to set these guys up. But with that, I got back to work, finishing up the storage room, dropping some more trees, breeding our new cow friends, eliminating some enemies, placing some more blocks, flying through space at the speed of light!
Okay, well, maybe not that bit, but that was the end of day 40. God, I'm so cringe. On day 41, I wanted to add an extension onto our storage system that would house a super smelter. All right, quick spoiler, this super smelter was definitely not super and barely even a smelter. So I spent the vast majority of day 41 digging out of space for our not so super smelter. And it was at this point, I was wondering, why did I decide to deal with this stuff underground? Wasting a bunch of time digging? But oh well, at this point, it's way too late to make a change. But yeah, I spent the rest of day 41 getting the things I thought that I would need for the super smelter and trying to figure out how I could actually make this thing work well. Yeah, maybe I should have used a tutorial for this. Feel free to call me stupid in the comments. Ugh. On day 42, I thought it would be better if I used rails and minecarts for the not so super smelter. I spent way too long messing around with that. But after long last, I finally created the worst smelter of all time. Forget super smelter, I'd made the pooper smelter. But at this point, I was so done with it that I just wanted to move on to something else. So I made it my mission to adventure out to find some coal. I head off on my boat until I come across some unexplored land and hopped right into a cave. I mined up as much coal as I could find, but once I thought I had enough, I took my boat back across the ocean and made it back home. That way I could fortune all my coal ore, which took us into day 43. I loaded up all the furnaces by hand because I'm an idiot and didn't automate it. And what made me even more of an idiot is the fact that I didn't grab the thing that I wanted to smelt the entire time. Basically the whole reason for building this pooper smelter. I needed sand. So I went back to where I found the cave yesterday, as I knew there was a whole bunch of sand there, and spent some time mining it up. But once I had what I needed, I found another shipwreck close by, and this one had something awesome. Moss and bamboo. I took all my loot back home and loaded up the smelter with all the sand. And it was at this point I realised how bad the smelter actually was. Yep, it really was a pooper smelter. Now, don't be asking me for a pooper smelter tutorial in the comments. I know you all want to build one in your own world, but this is my private design and I would only sell it for one billion dollars. Seriously though, this thing sucks and I never want to use it again. As punishment for building such a bad smelter, I forced myself to go around the island and sort out all the random items that were laying around in chests. That way I could put them all nice and neatly into our new storage room. This was incredibly boring, but also kind of satisfying. Oh yeah, I also used the armor trims which we got on day three or four, I think. These things were pretty snazzy. But yeah, that's all that really happened on day 44. But on day 45, I wanted to make some more base progress. And thankfully the pooper smelter had finally pooped out all the glass that I wanted it to make. And with that, I put a glass roof on top of the base. In hindsight, I'm not too sure if this actually looks cool or not, but for some reason at the time, I thought that it would. I spent the rest of the day 45 finishing off our crop fields. You know what? There was actually quite a bit of progress today. But on 46, the progress didn't stop there. Kinda. Today was the day that I finally wanted to make myself an enchanting table. My thinking was that at some point soon, I wanted to take on the dragon. And if I was going to do that, I was going to need to get a decent bow. As far as I know, villagers don't trade bows, so I was going to have to craft an enchant one. But of course, I needed an enchantment table to do that. I'm not sure if that really needed explaining, but here we are. So I grabbed myself some obsidian and the other bits that I needed to craft the enchantment table with some relative ease. The thing that was not so easy though was making bookshelves. I needed way more leather than I had, so it was either wait around and breed the cows or take the initiative and get out there to find some cows to unalive. So I set out on another adventure hoping to get enough leather for bookshelves, all while being completely unaware that I'd left my food back at the base and would be quite likely to die of starvation or maybe a baby zombie attack. Thankfully though, the biome I arrived in had some berries for me to eat. This was really a horrible flashback to day one, wasn't it? Eventually day 47 rolled round and I managed to find myself some cows, take their meat and cook it. I'd given up all hope at this point of getting enough leather and I started making the journey back to the island. I took my anger out on this poor polar bear, but yeah, I managed to skid and float my way back home. I threw my berries away and I did what I should have done two days ago. Breed the cows. On day 48, I figured I'd just hang around the base and keep myself busy while I bred up the cows. I made this nice little leaf border all around the exterior of the base and I did a little bit of work texturing up the interior. And of course, well, I kept breeding the cows. That's the whole point, right? Which takes us to day 49, where I realized the best way to pass time in Minecraft is fish. And that's exactly what I did. Fish, breed, fish, breed, fish, breed. One more. No. That's until I had enough cows for the leather that I needed. I finally managed to make the bookshelves and place them down around the enchanting table. I enchanted a couple of bows and then combined them in an anvil. I mean, it's not the best bow in the world, but at least we have infinity. I'm sure we can improve this thing later. On day 51, I wanted to start work on a new build project. And that was going to be some farmland around the base, just to make the area look a little bit better. The first thing I needed to do was clear out a bunch of space by chopping down all the trees in the area. Well, hopefully not forgetting to pick up the saplings. I 
thought it'd be a good idea to try on a diamond hoe. But to do that, I was going to need to get to level 30. Now, seeing as I didn't have an XP farm yet, I thought the best way to get XP was villager trading. So by trading sticks and iron, I managed to get myself up to level 27. That was before the villagers locked their trades. Seeing as I now had to wait for the next day, I went to the storage room to grab some blocks and spent the rest of day 51 plotting out some paths for the farmland. That way, I knew exactly where the fields were going to go. On day 52, I built up the walls for the farmland using a mix of different cobblestone blocks. I was just placing them randomly around the path I had mapped out. That way, when it all comes together, it kind of makes like a rustic country style wall. I also finally managed to trade my way to level 30 and enchant a diamond hoe. Yep, that was probably a waste of time. But after that fail, I spent the rest of day 52 getting all the water in the farmland. Day 53 was spent looking at the ground with a hoe in my hand, just holding the right mouse button. Yes, very exciting. I had to move the cows from the home into a much smaller, more cramped home. But don't worry, we're going to give these lovely ladies a much nicer place to live in a few days' time. I then grabbed a few crops from the main base and started to plant them in the new farmland, which takes us to the end of day 53. On day 54, I managed to get the rest of the farmland planted, which means that the small build project is almost complete. I just wanted to add a couple of buildings in the area to give it more life, starting with a fishing dock. And of course, I think we can all guess what I did on day 55. Yeah, I think I deserve a little break. After my little fishing holiday, it was finally time to give the cows a real home. So I grabbed some wood and began making them their very own cow barn. I didn't want to go into too much detail here because I really want all the buildings to be in keeping with the rest of the base, which at the moment is looking quite simple. Also, at this point, I was getting a little bit worried about the amount of time that I had left, seeing as there was still so much more I wanted to do in this 100 days. But you know what? I think this thing actually turned out pretty cute. But now with a cow barn out of the way, I wanted to get back to building some more farms in the main base. And the next thing on my list was a pumpkin farm. I figured these things are pretty easy to build and we could sell the pumpkins to a farmer villager to get lots of emeralds. But before I could get building a farm, I needed way more redstone. So it was another trip down in the mines for me. While strip mining, I came across a massive cave. I'm pretty sure it was the big cave that we found on day six. You know, the one that I was too scared to go in. But now that we are more geared up, I thought I'd go for it. Especially seeing as there's loads of redstone in there. Let's have a little caving montage. On day 61 and 62, I spent some time gathering up all the materials that I would need to build up the pumpkin farm, which included fortuning all my ores that I'd mined, grabbing some more cobblestone, and spending way too much time in the nether looking for quartz. I really hate this nether biome. But by the end of day 62, I was ready to pick a spot to actually put the pumpkin farm. And that was, of course, down below the base, right next to our sugarcane farm. But to fit the farm in, I was, of course, going to need to dig out an area for it to go. And on day 63, that's exactly what I did. Just another day I was thankful I got some good gear from the village of Paradise. Day 64 and 65 were spent building the actual farm itself. I used a tutorial from Il Mango, of which I'm sure you've all seen before, but just in case you haven't, I'm going to leave a link to that in the video's description, because this really is the only pumpkin farm you'll ever need. I spent the rest of day 65 chopping some more giant spruce trees so that I could try and spruce up the farm a little bit. <laughs> good one. I used the blocks that I had on hand to try and make the farm look as good as I can. It didn't really turn out that great, but whatever. I'm running out of time and I still have so much left to do, like killing the dragon and getting an elytra for one. So on day 66 and 67, that's exactly what I started work on. The first thing I had to do was go and explore the nether fortress so that I could get my hands on some blaze rods, something I've been putting off for quite a long time. I'm sure you've all gathered by this point, I'm not exactly the best Minecraft player. And for me, this place was dangerous. I managed to finish off the bridge that I built in the nether and started digging my way into the terrain when I came across some lovely oh, red water. Out. But eventually I found myself on top of the fortress and made myself a staircase back up in case I needed to make a quick exit. I dug my way into the ceiling where I was greeted by these two fine gentlemen. No skull, unfortunately. Next, I found some more distinguished gentlemen who wouldn't drop me their skulls. And I did find myself some other good loot. But that was not what I was there for. I was here for the blaze rods. So I spent some time running around, ending the lives of everything that I saw, until I had what I thought would be enough rods. Eight to be exact. I then made my way back to the portal, never wanting to enter the nether again. Man, I hate this place. I made it back to the base to keep my eight blaze rods safe and thought about the best way to get the next thing I needed. Ender pearls. 
And on day 68, I had the realization that I needed to head back into the nether. Because for those that don't know, Endermen spawn in a specific biome, the Warped Forest. I spent the next couple of days just staring at Endermen, running into my little hidey hole, and slaying them for their eyeballs. This would have been so much quicker if I had looting, and I spent the whole time debating if it would have been quicker to go back and try and get looting on my sword. But by the time I'd realized how stupid I was, I had what I hoped would be enough eyes. And once again, I made the journey back to the portal, hoping I'd never have to come back here again. I stored the eyeballs with the blaze rods, cook some more food in the world's worst super smelter, aka the pooper smelter, and head down to the farm area to plant the nether wart that I'd looted from the nether fortress. On day 71, I decided that for now, I'd had enough of fighting mobs and building farms. I wanted to start doing some more building. Now don't get me wrong, what I built so far was looking okay, but there was still so much more of the island to cover. But to build what I wanted, I was going to need to clear a lot of space. And that's exactly what I did. I wanted to clear all the trees and the villager houses that had a nice space to to make a brand new village of my own. This is maybe a little bit of an ambitious project to take on with only 30 days to go, but I consider myself a pretty quick builder, and if I kept the village in the simple style that I've been going for, I thought that I'd be able to do it. And by the end of day 72, I had the space that I needed to build. On day 73, I head out away from the island to chop a whole bunch of oak wood, seeing as I was going to need to match the palette of the rest of the island. That was it, I just chopped wood. Right, on to day 74, where I grabbed a whole bunch of cobblestone so I could plan out where the villager houses were actually going to be. This is such an important step when building a village because you can get a real understanding of where the buildings are going to be. Yeah, obviously. But it also gives you an idea of different sight lines and where things like paths and extra details can go. But by the end of day 74, I have my village plan. So I grab some cobble and some tuff to mix in, ready to start building. And on day 75, that is exactly what happened. I figured I would take things step by step. Rather than building one entire house at a time, I would work on the stone foundations for every house in the village and then move on to the next thing. But by the time night had hit, I'd run out of turf, so it was a trip down to the mines to grab some more. On the morning of day 76, I finished up all the stone foundations, ready to move on to the next phase of building. So I hopped back down to the storage room to make myself a little bit of scaffolding, and began working on the next story of the houses. I started off by using strip spruce pillars to act as supports, and then filled in the gaps with oak planks, leaving spaces for windows. And on day 77, I crafted up a whole bunch of spruce stairs and slabs so that I could make the outline for all the roofs. I got to work trying to make the roof trims as interesting but also as simple as I could. I was fast running out of time and I still had so much more work to do. Once I completed the trim on the first roof, it was just a matter of doing the same thing on all the other buildings. And on day 77 and 78, that's exactly what I did. Time lapse. On day 79, all of the roof trims had been completed, and it was time to fill in all of the gaps. I was originally planning on using oak, but after a little bit of thought, I decided I wanted to use something else that would make the village stand out a little bit more on the island. So once again, I head down into the mines to grab myself some deep slate. I thought this would match the palette of the houses, while also standing out on the island build as a whole. Once I got what I needed, I head back up and into the storage room so that I could turn all the deep slate into the blocks that I needed using the stone cutter. I then spent the rest of day 79 filling in all the gaps on the roofs until it got dark and I got scared of zombies spawning and my villagers dying. On the morning of day 80, I filled in the rest of the roofs with the deep slate. And I gotta say, this village project is really starting to come together nicely. A lot of build progress had been made very quickly and I was keen to keep going. But with only 20 days left, there was still one massive job I had to do. I mean, that wasn't finishing the massive build project that I'd taken on. And that was killing the dragon and grabbing myself an elytra from an end city. So I decided that I would take a small break from building and grab everything that I I thought I would need to complete that task. I crafted myself some golden apples, made one of those pumpkin hat things, and went to the village of paradise, desperately trying to upgrade my armor as best I could. I mean, it wasn't great, but I was feeling reasonably confident in my ability to destroy that dragon. On day 81, it was time to throw my first eye of ender to find the direction of the closest stronghold. Huh, nice. So I took a boat from the dock and started heading out into the wilderness, hoping that my eyes of ender wouldn't break and I'd have enough to fill in the end portal. Oh, come on. But eventually, after a lot of boating and walking... Oh, this is it. Come on. So I dug straight down until I found myself in the stronghold. I spent quite a while wandering around trying to locate the portal room, finding myself a little bit of loot and some new friends. But as day 81 was drawing to a close, I finally found the end portal. All right, let's do this thing. Dragon fight montage. No. 
No. No. Please. Yes! Yes! And with the dragon dead, there was only one thing left to do while I was in the end. And that was, of course, find myself yeah, an end city with a ship and grab myself an elytra. So I made a staircase up to the end gateway, hopped through, and slapped my render distance up to max, hoping that an end city would reveal itself. Oh, baby, let's go. There it is. After trying not to look an enderman in the eyes and making the world's biggest and most dangerous dirt bridge, I found myself at the end city. Now, I didn't really want to take any risks here. I wanted to get in and get out as soon as possible. I did not want to die after everything that I've been through. So I tied right up to the end ship with my remaining dirt, floated around a bit thanks to these stupid shulkers, until I finally managed to get inside the ship itself. I ended this guy's life and grabbed my wings. Mission complete. Sort of. I still had to get out of the end. For some reason, I thought it'd be a good idea to try and loot a little bit of this end city to maybe try and upgrade some of my armor or my tools. It kind of went okay and I did manage to grab some stuff from the chests, but after a short while, I didn't really want to take any more risks and started to make my way back home. Oh, why am I doing that? So dangerous. But yeah, I found myself back at the end gateway, hop back through, and head right to the end portal so I could teleport back home. On day 84, I spent some time sorting out the items that I'd acquired from raiding the end, including putting on some of these new armor trims. To work. But after that messing around, it was time to carry on with the mega build project. And up next was to start adding some details. I wanted to start off by adding some chimneys on some of the buildings. And to do that, I wanted to use clay bricks. So I set off on my boat to dig up some clay and bring back to the base to smell up into the actual bricks itself. But once that was done, I grabbed some spruce saplings so I could grow some more giant spruce trees. So I wanted to put a wall at the edge of the village to act as a little divide and separate it from what I had planned to do on the other empty side of the island. We'll talk about that later. I came up with a rough shape for the wall, alternating spruce logs and oak logs. I then spent the rest of day 84 chopping down the giant spruce trees I planted earlier, just so that I'd have enough blocks to raise up the wall. Time lapse. The wall's done. But now that the wall is out of the way, it's time to craft up the clay bricks we got yesterday and start putting up the chimneys on some of the village houses. I kept it simple by just building straight up, putting a campfire on top, slapping some trap doors around it, and then topping it off with a brick wall. I did this on a few of the houses until I ran out of clay bricks, but I thought it was looking pretty good. Having chimneys everywhere would have been a little bit overkill anyway. And well, that was the end of day 85. On day 86, it was time to add another layer of detail to the village build project. I started by crafting some glass panes and chucking them in all the gaps that I'd left for windows. I then spent a whole ton of time chopping down the rest of the spruce trees, hoping that was going to be enough to get me through the remaining 14 days of building. I took some of that spruce wood and started to add some more detail to the village houses by putting a trim that separated the stone base of the houses from the wooden top. But after that, I crafted up some iron bars to use as windows in the stone layer of the building. I could have used glass, but I think iron bars kind of match the stone feel a little bit better, and it also offers something a little bit different to look at, even though it kind of does look like a prison cell for a foundation. Oh well. Oh yeah, and I also got attacked by a million zombies. So I finished up the iron windows and called it a night. On day 87, I wanted to start working on the towers for the houses. This was going to give the village some much needed height variation. Some of you may have noticed that I'd left some gaps in the houses for these towers to go. But if I was going to build all these towers, I was going to need to grab some more materials. Mainly tough. Hence why you're looking at me mining it. Huh. But yeah, I eventually grabbed what I needed, including some of this mossy cobble, and began building up all the towers. Tower lapse. That means tower time lapse. Sorry, I'll just play the time lapse now. Which brings us on to day 88. Well, yet again, I wanted to make some more detailed progress on the village. I started off by crafting some coarse dirt so that I could put a few patches scattered next to the buildings. Next, I crafted up some different stone blocks as I wanted to do a little bit of terraforming on the house that was on top of the hill. It looked a little weird still on top of dirt, so I put a layer of stone over that so it looked like the build was a little bit more structurally sound. Plus, it gives a nice little detail in the village. I also continued to add more paths around the village so that the buildings were connected up. After that, I finally got around to placing all the doors in the doorways. Wow, who would have thought of that great idea? But anyway, I added a few more details around the village, like chests, barrels, pumpkins, 
pink petal things, and some leaves. This place was really starting to come to life. On day 89, I wanted to tidy up all of the interiors of the houses. And seeing as I had a whole ton of spruce wood, I decided I would just use that. Now, at this point, I wasn't too sure if I was going to have enough time to decorate the entire interior. But at the very least, I wanted it to be lit up and look sort of presentable. So I replaced all the grass floors with spruce planks and made a second floor using spruce slabs. All while, of course, making sure to slap down some torches in there. Now, there's still another massive chunk of the island to build on. And for what I had planned, I was going to need a lot of crops. I think you can see where this is going. And thanks to our base, gathering all the crops that I needed was super easy. Time lapse, time lapse, time lapse. We're doing another time lapse. Okay, whatever. Now, my plan for this area was to build a massive farmland. I'm sure you all guessed it. Something that I knew was going to look really great when it was finished, but also something that was going to be quick to do, seeing as well we only have 10 days left now. But if I was going to fill out this place with some awesome farmland, I was going to need to yeet all these trees in the area. And not only that, the buildings were going to have to go as well. And don't worry, I'll replace some of these later. I also did a little bit of terraforming to try and make the land a little bit more smooth, which would hopefully make the farmlands look a little bit better in the end. I mean, not like the end, I mean like when the project was finished. That probably didn't need explaining. Finally, on day 90, I plotted out a little path that led from the village to where I wanted to put an entrance to something that I was hopefully going to have enough time to build later. On day 91, I once again hopped down into the mines to grab some more materials, this time to get some cobblestone. How I don't have cobblestone at this point in the video, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, I took that cobblestone back up to the farmland project and used it to map out where the fields were going to go. But this cobblestone wouldn't be wasted, as I planned on decorating it just like I did with a smaller farmland area near the main base. To do that, I crafted up a whole bunch of stairs, slabs and walls and just started putting them randomly on top of the cobblestone until I was happy with the look of it. Once again, I was sort of going for like a rustic cottagey sort of wall thing. And I gotta say, this thing was coming together pretty nicely. Now, I think you can all imagine what happened on day 92. A lot of water placing and a whole ton of hoeing. So much so that I actually broke a diamond hoe. That's how you know this farmland is actually mega. Honestly though, that's about it for day 92. That took a long time. And of course, on day 93, I planted all the crops. Should we just have a little montage? Let's have a little montage. Montage. And that was a nice little montage. And with that little montage on the crops out of the way, I moved on to a little entrance for a build that I wanted to build. Yeah. So I dug a path into the hill with a little staircase that led up to the top. I flattened out the area so I had a nice little place to build. Or we'll try not to disturb the iron farm spawny thingy. I don't want to break that thing. On day 94, it was time to start working on the build. I didn't really have much of a plan going into this, other than, well, something would look cool in this spot. But with only six days left to go, there wasn't much time. I of course wanted to keep the build in the same simple palette as the rest of the island, but tried to give it some more original shape and detail. By the time the day was drawn to a close, I had a big chunk of this building done, but there was still one main thing that I wanted to add that was hopefully going to tie this farmland area together. And obviously, I'm sure you've all guessed it, that is a windmill. I mean, what else would it be? And by at the end of day 94, I had everything in place. Well, except the windmill part. I still needed the blocks for that. So on day 95, I made it my mission to head out and find what I needed. I wanted to use white blocks and remembered that I had some sheep that I could shear that were just floating in the ocean. I could have sworn there were more somewhere around here, but unfortunately, I think they may have drifted out to sea. I did spot a geode in an underwater cave just below our island, so I hopped down there to grab some of its calcite. This would go perfectly with the white wool, of which I still didn't have enough. So once again, I head out on my boat, running around, shearing all the sheep that I could see. On day 96, I finished off the windmill with a nice simple design that I thought fit the rest of the island. Anything too fancy here would have stood out way too much. But once that was done, I didn't want to waste any time, as there were still some big gaps on the island that still needed to be filled. So I planted a bunch of different saplings, seeing as well, I chopped down the vast majority of the trees on our island, and we were kind of lacking a bit of shrubbery. I also made a little lean-to area on the windmill building for a bit of extra depth and interest, and then with my leftover fences, I put a barrier on the edge of the hill for, well, health and safety reasons or something. But once that was done, I made myself some hay bales so that I could store them at the windmill, ready for milling. I think that's how windmills work. I also spent a little bit of time tidying up the entrance to the windmill slash iron farm area, and for that I used some leftover spruce wood, which ended up looking pretty sweet. I then grabbed some iron from the iron farm and crafted up a whole bunch of blocks that I could just put around and just display that, well, you can grab iron from here, right? But yeah, I spent the rest of day 96 planting a bit more greenery around the island, trying to make it look as pretty as I could. On day 97, 
Island, I decided I wanted to try and tackle the Iron Farm because this place really needed tidying up a little bit. It was looking a bit weird and boring. So I grabbed some deep slate, realized I didn't have enough, went to grab some more and started getting to work on the building. Now this was a little bit of a challenge because everything I built here needed to have a non-spawnable block on top. Otherwise it would just break the whole Iron Farm. I chose to use stairs, slabs and walls and make a sort of mythical ruin type thing. I mean, it looks a little strange, but it looks way better than what was there before, which was nothing. But anyway, once that was done, I did a little bit of texturing on the inside of the entryway using some mossy cobble. And that was the end of day 97. On day 98, I still had a few little jobs to take care of, and one of them was tidying up the nether portal. So I hopped through to grab myself some nether themed blocks and basically just spam them around the portal, trying to make it look like it was sort of growing out of the ground. I think it looks pretty decent considering the amount of time I spent on it. Next up, I wanted to grab myself a whole bunch of saplings so I could plant some more trees on the island to fill up some of the empty space. Luckily, there were still loads of saplings on the ground, where I was chopping a whole bunch of oak wood before. So I ran around and grabbed a whole bunch of saplings, and also chopped down some more trees so I could grab even more. As the sun was setting, I hopped back into my boat and made my way back to the island. I then planted a load of the saplings in the empty space, mainly focusing on the area next to the main base. Hopefully this was going to look pretty good, and also act as a bit of a tree farm on the island, seeing as well I didn't really have one anymore. Which brings us on to day 99, where this was really going to be my last day building on the island, as I wanted to spend day 100 doing something a little bit different. I sort of went round filling in a few holes and just doing some odd jobs. I made this little rustic style lean-to in the farmland area just to take care of a bit of awkward space. Next I planted a few more leftover saplings in the village and then moved on to placing a bunch of scaffolding around the broken tower. This was just to kind of tell the story that this was being fixed up or still built or something. I don't know, I was just placing blocks really. I also made a little campsite thing in an empty spot in the village for a nice little bit of detail and then took the leftover campfires and placed them underneath slabs that are around the iron farm. This gave it a pretty cool look I think. It's sort of gone from looking like a mythical ruin to an asteroid has hit the island. Either way, I like it. To cap off day 99, I worked a little bit on the entrance of the farmland area, creating a little arch to try and hide the iron farm when you're standing in the village. That way, when you walk through it, it sort of gets revealed to you. But with that done, I took my final sleep on the island. And well, here we are on day 100. Oh, I can't believe I didn't die. And as soon as we made it this far, I thought I'd spend today just doing a little bit of a tour, just to take a little bit of a closer look at what we've achieved. Now, I think we'll come over here and start at the main base, seeing as well, that's what we worked on first. And yeah, like I said, we'll just have a little bit of a tour. And I suppose I'll talk about my thoughts and feelings for those that care. Wait, can I actually make any rockets? I got gunpowder, two gunpowder, brilliant. I'll make what I can. All right, grab the elytra. Let's have a little fly up look at the main base. And yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. I mean, I definitely didn't get as much done as I wanted to on the inside. It's looking kind of bare, but it's looking kind of tidy. I'll take it. Now, first reflection, I definitely bit off more than I can chew for this project. But here we got our storage room, all like fairly organized, sort of. And uh, we got this thing in here. On second thoughts, we're not going to talk about that. But yeah, I quite like the storage room. Kind of my go-to design. So that one didn't require too much thinking. Well, actually keeping it organized kind of did. Oh, well, while we're in here, we'll take a look at the farms as well. So first up, we built this thing, which is the sugarcane farm. And it's kind of working. Pretty good. Turns out I didn't actually need any of that anyway. I kind of did plan to get Elytra early and build a mob farm, but well, that didn't happen. Now, this thing would have been a lot more efficient if I had remembered to put lights in, which as you can see, none of these have grown because there's no light in there whatsoever. But I did make a few pumpkins. Again, we didn't really end up needing those because, well, the village of paradise kind of became a bit redundant once I got the gear. I think next up we built all the farmland, right? And this was kind of like a little tester for what we did at the end of the 100 days over that way. But I do think this ties the area together quite nicely. And of course, we built our cow barn. Hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. And this thing kind of set the style for the whole sort of build. I mean, like I've said a million times, it's nothing crazy, but it's kind of clean. We'll ignore this along here. But anyway, forgetting that, moving along, we have our fishing dock over here. I've got this mending and luck of the sea fishing rod. Man, I would have loved to have more time to fish. But like the idiot I am, I took on a bigger project than I could really manage. Obviously, just see, we just built up this little nether portal thing looking pretty nice. But then that leads us into the village. Now, this is kind of a spare of the moment idea. And I think it's turned out pretty nice. We'll get a little fly overview. Oh yeah, that right at the center of the island. Kind of feels like a main sort of part of it. Now we do have this huge space here where I was going to try and put a bigger building, but you know what? I'm glad I didn't because, well, this whole thing was very tight on time. Yeah, I think the village is probably my favorite part of the island. Obviously, we didn't get to the interiors and stuff, but once again, they're all looking relatively tidy. I don't know who would live in here, but it's definitely not me. And then that leads on to our final area, which is the farming area. And this place is super nice. Just look at it. Fields everywhere, nice and relaxing. It's chill. You've got this little storage barn lean-to thing here. 
here. And we've got our entrance up to the top. We've got our windmill. We're not looking here. And finally, we've got our iron farm, which I'm so glad I finally got to decorate because, well, this big patch of path was kind of looking a bit weird. But I think the ruiny mythical thing kind of turned out pretty nice. And of course, we've got our cherry trees back here, which give a nice splash of color to this area. Yeah, looking pretty good. Oh, and it's raining. Brilliant. Seems like a bit of a sad way to end this video, but um, it's raining. I'm cold. I'm tired. I have no real interior to live in. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!